Hey, what's up, everybody? Tony with La Lido Loca, and this is my mega regga walk around ship tour on the one billion dollar Carnival Jubilee. <music> Let's start in the cabin as we normally do. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about this bad weather, but uh, very simple here. You got a couple shelves. You got uh, these two bottles of water. Be careful. They'll charge you if you drink them. You also have a telephone and a QR code for room service. You got the big cooler there. You got some storage, couple drawers, third drawer. You have this multi-use seat a uh, serving tray, storage. If you open it up here, there's storage in there. This flips over to become a serving tray. And of course you can sit on it, maybe. Look at how challenging. You can sit on it. You got power here. You've got four USB-A connectors. You got three traditional plugs. You got this large mirror here. For doing your makeup the room doesn't come with these makeup brushes uh, but it would be cool if they did you have this couch and you have well you've got jenny b well hello jenny b what do you think about this cabin so far this week uh it's been great yeah, yeah. Fa favorite feature uh the location is great and my favorite feature is probably a little hack that we bring in the table for another desk oh we bring in the table for another Hacking the system. Jenny, Jenny, Jenny. Got this nice piece of art here. Do you want to tell them about the bed hack? That doesn't look like the normal bedding. Uh, so what's really nice is, well, they, what Carnival, that quilt is so heavy, the one that they put on when they make up the bed. And um, we usually, we changed it out this time for a lighter version of a very soft blue blanket. Oh, I like it. Yes. I like it. All right, I'll let you get back to whatever you're doing over there. It's the last day of the cruise. It's really not nice to to be uh, interrupting the Jenny B. We do have these. They, they don't have traditional nightstands, but they do have these shelves. I wonder, because this bed can be split into two. I'm assuming that maybe those move. They would have to. Uh, power by the bed. Each side does have a USB-A and a reading lamp, which is kind of cool. Uh, I think it came with just four pillows, so we got some extra pillows, and I kind of have to keep my distance here. I am in trouble with the people for the ethical treatment of towel animals, which is P-E-T-T-A, so I've got a restraining order. I can't, I don't know, what is that? Is that a monkey? Is that a bear? What? So challenging. Uh, you got your other side of the bed there. Uh, nicely decored. These rooms are very similar to what you're going to see on the other XL class. You have a big TV on the wall, a little tight space between the TV and the bed. You have these two closets here. It's our last night. We still haven't packed up yet. Our suitcases are under the bed, but everything you need. There's a safe in there. There's hangers. There's shelves. Um, plenty of storage for two people on a seven-day adventure. You've got these hooks here that you can hang hats or your snoozing sign or towels, what have ye. You got all your important information, how to get to your muster station. It's been a little warm on this cruise. We can't tell. I don't know if it only works. So the lights only work when your card is in, in the dealio. And I feel like maybe it feels like this time it, only the air has only worked when your card was here. It's, you know, we just got back to the cabin. It's really warm. It does have like this super freeze button and it will get cold. But right now it's a little warm. And then you got the re the bathroom here, restroom, bathroom, toilet. If you're from the UK, it's not bad. So you know the toilet's oriented straight away toward the shower, and this shower is actually fairly a good sized shower. You've got toilet paper in the right place. That's a change from I think maybe the Mardi Gras. The toilet paper was behind you, almost where the tissue was. Got the extras of all that stuff. And you got the shower, which I do like the fact that there's a door here and it does feel pretty big. It's got a shower head that's detachable and adjustable. They provide shampoos and body washes. Got a little handle. You got a little shelf. You got a little foot thing if you need to shave your legs or just, you know, work out a Charlie horse. And then um, it always fascinates me with the showers on cruise ships. 
you have one knob here that uh, controls the pressure, how much water comes out. And then you have another knob over here that determines how hot or cold the water is. And it gets very hot. So you got to be careful not to scald yourself. But a pretty nice, pretty nice shower. This is my outfit for the day. But yeah, it's, uh, again, even in the bathroom, plenty of storage for people cruising for seven days, probably even longer. More hooks, so they do that. All right, before we hit the action decks on this cruise ship, let me just go show you the balcony sitch. Good sized balcony, but wow, we're almost back to Texas. We're in the Gulf of Mexico, and it seemed like as soon as we got with any closeness to Texas, the weather turned poor. It's been some crazy weather this week. It's been raining like this all day, but let's take a quick look at the balcony. All right. Well, this looks a little better than earlier. We had thunderstorms earlier. And we're starting to see some sun break through, which is nice. Even in bad weather, in gray skies, there's nothing better than being on a cruise ship. But uh, this weather has kind of deterred people from using the top decks today, making for a lot of people inside on a sea day. Yeah, balcony, two big chairs. Of course, we took the table inside, but a good sized balcony. I like it. All right, that's it for the cabin. Let's uh, take ourselves down to the first action deck. Deck six. Hey guys, Hi. how you doing? Hi. Good, good, doing good. Bye. Have safe travels. Go. All right, so here we are, off the forward elevators of deck six, and you've got the Cloud Nine Fitness Center here. Really nice gym with a lot of good cardio equipment. You got free weights over here. And there's also treadmills across the way that look out into the ocean, which is nice. There's also restrooms for men and women. And then here you have the Cloud Nine Spa and Salon and Thermal Suite, where you can get all kinds of treatments done. And then there's also a little access to the Jubilee Theater back this way. You can enter on deck six. Walk down the hall here, show you the entrance. Just take a quick peek in. Seems like there may be something going on here. Could be closed though. We'll have to see. Could be a rehearsal or something. I think there's a show rehearsal going on. I'll throw in some footage of the theater. And as we come back out, we've got this is the Punchliner Comedy Club. There was an afternoon comedy show. It's five o'clock right now, so like four o'clock comedy show letting out. And like I said, it's a sea day today with bad weather, so a lot of folks are doing stuff on the inside. Quick look at the interior of the punch liner. Nice club. Which had one nice. Carnival Jubilee sign. It's the branding for Punchliner. It's a center stage is located in Grand Central. And this is one of the multi-use venues here on the ship. Seen all kinds of stuff here from singers to 
juggler. It is also home to a bar that is open most of the day. Tons of options for stuff here. We've got tons of seating. Not sure what show we have here tonight, but it's one of those places that has all these screens that they use wonderfully to create environments. The interesting thing about these screens on the Jubilee, from what I understand, is they're kind of locked in place. Normally, these screens are able to be retracted and let the sunlight in, but it doesn't sound like that's the case, that they're going to have to go and get some sort of repair on those screens. So as we leave the center stage area, that bar, let's walk back down the hall a little bit. Opposite of the Punchliner Comedy Club is the piano bar. And this is a lively spot every night on the cruise. It's called Piano Bar 88. Piano Bar 88. It's not open right now, but it's uh, very nicely themed with a piano there. Lots of seating. Of course, it has its own bar. You get your libations on. So as we make our way up from the piano bar, of course, you got some great artwork on the ship. We make our way to Java Blue. And Java Blue is the coffee spot here on the Carnival Jubilee. They have some self-serve drinks. You can get coffee and water here. But then they also have coffee for purchase. Another nice feature is they do have included food, mostly included savory food. So you've got sandwiches, you've got empanadas, you've got wraps. But then you also have a bunch of sweets, but all the sweets are not included. Those are for a fee. The cookies, the donuts, they cost money. And then also for a fee is coffee. So I'll show you where the coffee starts. Got the whole coffee bar situation here. Always a busy, popular spot. They did change this up a little bit from the celebration. This is all new seating, and then they have this cooler in the back there. Java Blue butts right up to cherry on top which is the candy store here on jubilee you can get candy by the pound which is fun and then they also have pre-packaged candies that you can pick up lots of great candy selections they got uh, they got the wax bottles with juice which is always good and they also have a nice selection of toys stuffed animals ducks that you could purchase and hide if you wanted. And then kicking it out of there, we're still over here looking at the central stage. But if we go even deeper, even deeper onto deck six, it takes us to the new bar or a new branded bar here on the Jubilee. This is the Golden Mermaid. This is one of those spots that on each of the XL class ships they have rebranded. And here on the Jubilee, they've rebranded this, the Golden Mermaid. They have this awesome ship model of the Jubilee. And then they have a lot of interesting seating here. And then this is a spot where every night they have music. I've seen a string quartet here, guitarist, pianist. It's uh, lots of cool stuff. I do What I do want to show you is this mural this kind of blue. Take a look at this artwork. Just this huge multi-wall mural. We'll follow the mural all the way down. You know, all the way down to the Atlantic restaurant. This is one of the main dining rooms here on Jubilee. They're getting ready for dinner. 
It's really nice. I love the corals and the aquas, even the carpet. It's such a nice, this is my favorite side plate, Abe Lincoln. And of course the seating, very accommodating for guests of all size. So it's very, uh, very nice here. Hey, how's it going? So we'll go from here to an area that's also somewhat changing on these XL class cruise ships. And the Mardi Gras, this wasn't necessarily seating. This was part of, I think the fortune teller bar. But what they did is they moved the bar out. And this is another bar that they, that they brand differently on every cruise. It's called Dr. Inks. But can you tell uh, something special about that sign? But we'll cover it in a second, but let me show you some of these shops. This is what I call Hip Fish Hall. So these are all hip fish stores. This is the purse store. Purses, wallets. They also have a hip fish accessory store. Hip fish accessories. More purses, but this kind of brings in like your jewelry, your earrings, things to accessorize with, hats. And then if you want to finish your hip fish experience, you get yourself some perfume. There's also some colognes in there, so uh, you can get taken care of there. And then we also have gold by the inch, so you can get bracelets and necklaces and all kinds of stuff made here. So yeah, this is awesome. And then that little bit of hip fish haul takes you right back to center stage here in Grand Central. We'll take another look at it. Looks like they're done doing their rehearsals for the evening. They've opened this up for seating for the variety night. This gives us a chance really to take a look at this venue. What's really nice is not only do they have the seating kind of on this main floor here, but they also have seating up on deck seven and then even seating up on deck eight. So a lot of opportunity. The only challenge with all of the shows on this ship is these venues fill up fast. And so it's a little challenging when you're gonna go watch a 45 minute show and sometimes you have to get there an hour in advance to make sure that you can see the show. So what's an hour or what's a 45 minute show now becomes almost like an hour and 45 minute show, which uh, meh, that's the way it goes on these big ships. You get a lot of good entertainment, but you do have to make some schedule adjustments. All right, so here we are back on deck five, going back toward Dr. Inks. Have you figured it out yet? D-R-I-N-K-S, drinks. This is one of the happening bars. Lots of seating, lots of drinks. And of course, we've got live entertainment here every night. We've got uh, country music tonight. Sounding good. And as we go from Dr. Inks, takes us over here to Emerald's Bistro, which is a four pay restaurant. We'll peek at the menu. We did have lunch here today. It was really good. I think one of the best values on this cruise ship is the serving of rice and beans that you get here for three bucks. Uh, look at this big old plate, three bucks. And then, and then we've got this, this big line. You may be wondering. So like I said, it's now 521. You got this huge line. And this is for the main dining room down here at the aft of deck six. And the interesting thing is they have this test kitchen where they will do it's the carnival kitchen. They'll do cooking classes. This is also where they do the chef's table. And uh, well, the line has just broken free for the main dining room. Everybody's ushering in. So the crowd has dissipated here at the Pacific restaurant. Let's just go inside and we'll take a quick look and see what it looks like. Good evening. Good evening. Hey, how are you? Good, thank you. All right, let's go take a look. So it has a, a little bit of a different look than the other restaurant. But I believe if you have set time dining, this is where you come. And then if you have any time dining, there is another level where any time has to go and make a reservation. So they're just getting ready for their first evening seating. And it looks like another 
another full dining room. All right, so that takes us to the very end of deck six. Let's climb these stairs. We'll go up to deck seven and, uh, well, there's a lot more to see. Up to deck seven we go. All right, so quick change of plans. Kindle Fire, uh, cruise director extraordinaire, just came on and said that the sun was out, and this may be the last chance to see the outside decks in a better light. So let's see if we can get some footage from the outside decks. I can show you some of that. Then we'll get back down to deck seven. It is a little more sunny and a little less rainy than earlier. It popped out on deck 16, the very aft of the ship. You have the tides bar there. And then you've got this nice pool area. You've got a couple hot tubs. And then you've got an area of the ship that will actually give you some viewing of the wake. Look at this pool, so nice. Get in there and get your feet wet. Then it has kind of a deeper area. And of course you get this nice, tell me this isn't what cruising's all about. That nice wake view. This does give us a good opportunity to look at the track of Bolt, which is the first roller coaster at sea. Of course, this is the third iteration of it. I did get to see it in action in Cozumel from a distance. Kind of cool to see everything going around. Then you've got a couple hot tubs here. This weather is greatly improved from earlier. And we do have some sun, so we'll take advantage of it. Let me show you the other part of deck, deck 16 here on the aft. Then we'll climb up to 17 and 18 and take a look at some of these outside decks. Almost 6 p.m. We still got some good sunlight. The other feature here of deck 16 is Shaq's Big Chicken. This is exclusive to the XL class. Chicken sandwiches, they have chicken tenders, they have breakfast in the morning. That all happens right there at Shaq's Big Chicken. All right, up we go. All right, got a little seating area here on 17. Of course, <laughs> wet from the day's worth of rain. You can walk all the way forward on both of these sides of deck 17, but we will climb up to 18 real quick. I believe this could be a smoking section, yeah. So this is the smoking section on 17. Kind of goes all the way to the back there. But we're, uh, we'll climb up these stairs here. Up the stairs we go to see some mini golf. Uh, mini golf is in effect though. Got people, uh, the next Arnold Palmer might be on the links here. Nice little themed mini golf. And then you have, here's the mini golf rules and the putters. And then this is the ultimate playground, kind of their zone. They use the terminology zones. And then got a nice look here at the water slides and the kids area climb those stairs to go on bolt and uh, all flanked by the whale tail. Very cool looking back here. This track looks wild. All right, we'll continue our trip forward. Alternate look at some of the water slides happening here. As we continue. Now, as we approach the middle part of deck 17, we you got these nice clam shells here. Then you come to the sports court, which we've got some basketball going on here. They also have had a couple pickleball sessions and pickleball tournaments. You've got the ropes course above us. 
pretty cool looking ropes course. And then as you go forward, you got some foosball. And it takes us to the main pool on the Lido. Yeah. Take a look at that from deck 17. Of course, I'm walking on the walking track, so you can get up and get your steps in on the walking track. And then we've got the Lido and the Lido pool here. We'll probably have to go, probably have to go down a level to get a better look at that. But this is the ultimate playground and all of its features. We've seen them all. Bolt, the ropes course, the sports course, waterworks, and mini golf. I think I was saying that the ultimate playground was on 17. At some point I started saying 17. All that is deck 18. I am now on deck 17 with uh, some important stuff to show you. All right, first and foremost, let's talk about swirls. This is the included ice cream station. This is open for most of the day. No charge. Right next to it here, we have a drink station that has water. It's got juices and coffee. And then of course that brings us to one of the more iconic spots on newer Carnival cruise ships. We're talking of course about Guy's Burger. This place is hopping as it is dinner time. Guy's Burger with a toppings bar. And then you can queue up here and get your favorite burger. All branded by Guy. Guy on the TV. And a really nice spot where a lot of folks go and grab some dinner. Looks like the sun's probably still behind the cloud. I was going to say it might be nice to see a sunset, but it's like it's still behind the cloud. Let's go a little bit more toward the mid. All right, as we approach the mid of 17, you have the second level of the Red Frog Rum Bar. It's a two level bar here on the Lido. And of course, that overlooks the main Lido pool. We still have people in the pool. And I think you have people watching a movie. I believe there's a screen behind us. Let's walk down and see what we can see on the screen. Plenty of deck chairs after a rainstorm. That's the, that's the pro tip. Wait till it rains. Yeah, that's not fun in the sun with the rain. What do we got? Got some sort of movie I don't, oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. There you go, playing on the big screen. All right. And then we'll go up one level. How's it going? Okay, so I've climbed back up to the aft of deck 18, where we're gonna find Carnival's adult only area, the Serenity deck. Let's go. Serenity. Adults only retreat. I do like the Serenity area on these XL class cruise ships. They got all the stuff you want. They got hot water. They have a hot tub over here. They got the hot water. Lots of ample seating. Got a towel station. And then one of the features I really like about this Serenity deck and the other Serenity decks on the XL class is they got a cold pool. So when you're out here baking in the heat, your only option isn't a hot, hot tub. Your only option isn't a cold pool filled with kitties. You can come back here, get into this nice cold pool. I love this area during the times that it's open. You've got a bar here. Sometimes they have a salad bar over there. You've got nice seating. And then of course you've got the swimming pool. Now the area above, and somebody's gonna have to help me with the name, that's in a, that's a for pay area. I think that might be for sweet guests only or something that you can buy additionally, but that is not access to everybody unless you pay some money. But uh, look, if you're, if you're an adult and you can get back here in Serenity, this is all you need. Fresh creations. That's where they have the salad bar. Here it is, I kind of thought, I thought I knew the name, but I don't want to say the wrong name. Loft 19, Cabana's $500 per day, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So if you drop half a grand, you can get that exclusivity. Exclusivity. 
so we'll drop down from deck 18. Love this art. Deck 18. Down to deck 17. Of course, this is cabins on deck 17. It's kind of what the elevator bank looks like, all three elevators, forward, mid, and aft. And then when we get to 16, we can go right back out onto the Lido deck. The ship's so big, I think I'm getting my forward and my aft mixed up. The Serenity is on the bow of the ship, the front of the ship. Now that we're on deck 16, let me show you some of the Lido eateries on 16, and then we'll check out the Lido buffet. So, we've got some carnival staples here. First off, this is the Blue Iguana Cantina serving burritos, burritos and tacos during times of being open. And we also have a four pay restaurant, the Seafood Shack. Seafood Shack. And then Street Eats, the food changes here from time to time. They have wings every day, fries, steam dreams, and mad sizzle. That's all included with your cruise fare. Got a drink station. And then plenty of seating. And then let me show you one more notable thing on the Lido. A better look at the two-story Red Frog I guess it's not Red Frog Rum Bar on this ship. It's Red Frog Tiki Bar. Take it. And then if we tuck right back inside here at the mid on deck 16, we enter the Lido Marketplace, AKA the Buffet. The Jimmy Buffett, RIP Jimmy. And what I really like about this buffet, there's a lot of different food stations. They're not always open at all times, but they have a lot of great seating in this buffet. Sometimes if you sit away from where the food is being served, you can really kind of get some nice seats off by yourself. There's a drink station in almost every section, but uh, for dinner, most of the time the food is being served more toward the after this. Let's see what is on the buffet for the evening. Hey, how's it going? Of course, we got a nice little line. The interesting thing is, depending on the time, they'll have either one or two of these serving lines open. Looks like they have two open tonight. And as usual, there's a, a decent crowd. Take a quick peek at the food. First, they have some signage up that tells us what they have. We'll swing back through and see if we can see the sign. Sorry. So we've got fruits and cookies and desserts. Hot desserts. Ooh, look at the carrot cake. And salad bar area over here. I did take some footage of the buffet I'll throw it in here as I continue to walk and talk so you can see some of the food close up. But yeah, like I said, there's probably probably eight of these stations in the whole buffet area, but depending on the meal, it seems like that's what they open. So this has been open for dinner every night. A different buffet set has been open for breakfast, and then a subset's been open for lunch. But this is, uh, this is kind of toward the back the back of the buffet. Another one of these nice drink stations. And just for reference, you go out the exit there. 
that takes us to Shaq's Big Chicken on the aft of 16. While we still have some light, let me go down to deck eight and show you Summer's Landing. Looks pretty dark out there though. We'll see what we can see. And then down we go. When we make it all the way. 14, 12, we skip 13, 11, 10, nine. Well, this Deck is an eight. elevator miracle. We got all the way to the bottom. How about that? All right. And then here we are at Summer Landing, which is also part of Guy's Pig and Anchor. So they do have a microbrewery here where they're brewing their own version of beer. And well, you can smell the barbecue heavy here. Guest services on eight will walk past there. The carnival store, they've got some Jubilee only stuff and then some branded carnival stuff. And then there is included food here for dinner. That's kind of what that line is to get the barbecue we also have this kind of sports viewing area. Got some hockey on tonight and another soft serve area, which is nice. So you've got all these folks here eating the included barbecue. This is a really great venue though. Got these big tables. They have a live band most nights after the dinner. And you also have a couple options for recreation. Got the foosball table. You got the shuffleboard. And then you got these nice other tables to sit. Where... Hi, guys. How you doing? All right, so leaving the foosball tables, let's hit the patio, which is really kind of the heart of summer landing. So much like, again, the attention to details, nice, Theming, decor, decorating. And then here on deck eight, you also have another aft pool that gives you views out of the wake. Of course, uh, we've lost the sun. The sun has gone down. But another nice spot where you can enjoy some time on the aft of the pool. Nice seating out here. And uh, yeah, this is just your options for decade. Now they do have this on the sea day. So they have this dinner at the Pig and Anchor at night, but then they have this Pig and Anchor, which is another, I believe this is only on the sea day, but they will open this up and you can get food here. And it looks like they might be doing some of the food prep out here for what they're serving inside. So. Very popular spot here is the Pig and Anchor restaurant all times of the day because of the sports and the live music and the bar. Then of course at night for dinner and then very popular in the after the ship here with this pool, which is super nice. All right, we'll, we'll go right back through Pig and Anchor and we'll pick it up near guest services. All right, here we are picking it back up at the carnival store. Like I said, this is where you're gonna come for all of your Carnival branded items, including ship specific, Jubilee specific memorabilia and souvenirs. Here we have guest services. That's the last night of the cruise and nobody's in line. So you have diamond and platinum here. And then you've got just regular guest services line and it's nice to see no, no line on the end of the, on the last night, that's nice. Guest services, taking care of business. Always. Always taking care of business. You guys are great, thank you. As we move on, got action, elevator action over there. What a great video game, elevator action. Then you have this whole dedicated area to shore excursions. And in addition to shore excursions, they also have some even different options for merchandise. I just wanna point this out. See, it says Yeti. They're not giving into the Stanley craze here. They're still Yeti proud. Oh, this is cool. So let me point this out. They have these in a few places around the ship. This is, of course, an ATM. I think we know what that is for. 
But you can also manage your sale and sign card from one of these kiosks. So say you want to add cash so that your credit card doesn't get hit with a big charge. Maybe you want a jackpot in the casino. You can add cash there. You can manage all kinds of stuff. You want to add another credit card to your, uh, to your shipboard account. You can do all that right there. So the sale and sign kiosk is the Rudy Seagrill. This is one of the specialty restaurants on board. Of course, they're full in dinner service now. So let me just give you a peek at the menu. I've not tried one of these Rudy C grills yet. You have stairs that are going down to deck seven with this cool fish, fish feature. This is another spot that is usually different on the XL class. You'll have a different feature for each one of those. You have a different feature for each one of the ships. Thank you. And then another thing that's usually different on the ships are the offerings at the deli and the pizza place. So we're here on deck eight. This is all usually themed different for each one of the ships. So, hey, how you guys doing? So the deli has a pulled pork sandwich, which is new here. There's no Reuben, which I think is on the other ships. I don't know what the other new what the other new sandwiches, but I think, and I, I'm curious to see if the other ships have this, they have a variety of hot dogs on the ship. You can get a beef frank, an Italian sausage, a bratwurst, Cajun uh, andouille sausage. So I think that that might be new. And then they also offer new pizza. The barbecue chicken and the Tex-Mex, those pizzas are different than what you have on the Celebration and on the Mardi Gras. They've got a drink station. They have access to outside there. And then they've got a nice seating area so that you can have your pizza or that you can have your deli sandwich. One thing to note about the pizzeria, which I don't know if everybody realizes, but in addition to getting pizza, which is included, they also sell drinks there. So if you have a drink package or if you just want to purchase a drink, you can get it there. And that takes us right to the heart of Deck 8. This uh, takes you outside to the smoking section. So there's a smoking section that runs the length of the ship this way. And then the Marina Bar, really a great spot. They can make coffee for you. They can make drinks. Um, really some of the best bartenders, best service that we've had on this cruise has come from Marina Bar. And then you've got another big seating area on this side good spots to sit that takes us to this feature they call this area the shores which is something different on each ship this one's the shore on the celebration there's a big postcard of Miami but here you have this nice Chris Craft Chris Craft say that fast Chris Craft boat with a nice kind of mural of Galveston and then that is Cucina del Capitano which on this ship is included so you can go there for main dining room without any additional fee. Nice restaurant. We've uh, had dinner there once this cruise, and it was great. So as we continue on deck eight, you have your photo gallery. Man, I'm hot. Of course, it's all digitized. Pixels is the official name here on Carnival of their photo gallery. You can get an appointment made for specialized pictures. You can view all the pictures that the photographers have taken for you. They also sell camera equipment, speakers. This is where you go to get your platinum gift right here, in addition to pick up any prints. And then of course they have a portrait studio for consultation. So much uh, opportunity to look at your photos. Hey, how are you? Got a great, oh no, thank you so much. And then this is kind of more that seating I showed you from down below, seating for center stage. This is the deck eight seating. Hey, how you doing, man? So we continue on, still on eight, heading back into Grand Central. We have the Effie store, which uh, fine jewelry, watches really kind of feels like a legit jewelry store going to show you some stuff sell you some stuff effie has their own so that's fine jewelry 
Then we have Effie Front Street Watches. I've done my best to stay out of the watch store. They've had all kinds of sales. Pre-used Rolex, pre-owned Rolex, is that what they say? Tag Hauer, Invicta. And then uh, we've probably eaten at the sushi restaurant three times since we've been on this ship. This is Bonsai Sushi, which is really fun. Right next to Bonsai Sushi is the Bonsai Teppanyaki, which has been very popular. Then you have more seating. Some of that seating looks down to the central stage. Hi, Tony. Hey, how's it going? Good. All right, so also we have on eight, you have a stairwell down to the casino on seven. But I really like this feature. It's not, you know, it's not the longest bridge, but it is a bridge that kind of is suspended over the bar here that's on deck seven. So you got a bar down there, which is kind of cool. And this is another place sometimes where people congregate to watch the goings on down there in Central Stage. Variety night. As we move forward, you've got some more seating. You have a specific dream studio experience where you can go, and this is where they do your professional shots. Some examples there. And then, as I can hear, we've got karaoke going on in the Havana Bar. Havana Bar is cool. They've been doing a lot of karaoke here. They also have like a Latin band that plays at night. This is part of the Havana experience, which is really nice. And then as we move toward the back, or front actually. Hey, how you guys doing? I'm confused as to whether we're forward or aft again, but this is Chibang. I think we're forward and that is included on the sailing. We had lunch there the other day, it was really good. And that brings us all the way forward on deck eight. One last thing to show you on deck eight is the Havana stateroom and suites. Uh, this is a private section that gives you certain access to certain Havana things. Uh, but yeah, completely different theme there. Now that finishes up deck eight. I'm gonna go down one deck and we will uh, we'll walk through deck seven. All right, here we go. Deck seven, of course the big part of deck seven is the Jubilee Casino and the Jubilee Theater. Jubilee Theater usually has two shows a night, some events during the day. Uh, let's see what time we're looking at. 6.24. Their first show will be like 7.30, 7.45, so the doors normally open a half an hour before the show. It's been packed every night. And then this side, there's four entrances to the Jubilee Casino. You notice there's a sliding glass door there. This is the smoking side of the Jubilee Casino. And uh, the challenging thing is you cannot get to the middle of deck seven without walking through some portion of the casino. We'll see if we can take a quick walk through the non-smoking side. This is non-smoking, but one thing I wanted to point out is in addition to the ATM, they now have these machines where you can manage your player bank. So. In the past, if you had charged something to your player bank and you needed to cash it out, you would have to go to the cashier, which the cashier is over here. But now with these machines, you can do it without that. So that's a really nice feature. So now here is the middle of the casino. We have the casino bar and it's pretty wild. I mean, all the bar tables are non-smoking, but it's right next to the smoking area. So you can kind of you can kind of get it a little bit. You can smell the smoke. And then there's a quick peek, quick peek of the rest of the casino. There's the doorway that we saw, the stairwell coming down. I'm gonna go toward the one of the other exits to show you the exit out of the casino. This exit here, you have another one of these machines that will allow you to manage your player bank. And then the exit pops us out at the mid elevators takes us right back into Grand Central. More access to seating for the nightly show. I'll show you this aspect of it. Is that reaction? Yes, I have kind of these bleacher seats, which is pretty neat. They really can get a lot of people 
in play for this nightly show. It looks like we're starting to get a crowd there. And then uh, another difference on this ship than the other ship is you have this Star of Texas. This is normally a big red chair in front of the casino, but Star of Texas continuing from the middle elevators here. You have the Island Traders shopping. Got more watches, bags, clothing, a lot of good options. And yes, I have this kind of out in the out in the middle type shopping. Nice hats. You've got the port side liquor and tobacco, with cigarettes and liquor. Lots of cool options there. Love that hat. Nice hat. And that takes us to the Alchemy Bar. Interestingly, they do use the exits or the hallways to the restrooms to hang some of their art. But this is, of course, the famous Alchemy Bar. This is also an entrance to the Limelight Club. Sometimes they do comedy in there. You can also access the Limelight through the backside of the casino. And then this is Dr. Inks from above. Got that nice, such a nice looking promenade area right there on deck six. I got this nice feature. A little Beatles blaring there, Octopus Garden. Nice song. Now the alchemy is certainly popular. This is where they'll mix whatever drink you ask for. You tell them what kind of drinks you like. They'll mix it. The other aspect here is this current area. These screens will do a show from time to time during the day. And then you can actually, you can actually control. You can actually control those screens. As we exit the Alchemy Bar, there's a lot of good seating here. And then what's wild is this is the operation control center for the kiosk, for the kiosk for the currents. They'll open it up and you can actually change what's on the screens here, which is a really cool feature. And as we continue toward the aft of eight, you have the steakhouse, which is the Fahrenheit 555, including their bar there. You got the official spot for the art gallery. Then we've got the Pacific restaurant here, which uh, we've already seen, right? So that's the main dining room. Sounds like they're doing their showtime there. Well, I can say with confidence, this was a cruise ship built for Texas. It's been a wonderful week on the Carnival Jubilee. Probably one of the best cruise directors I've ever experienced in Kindle Fire. She's from Texas. But yeah, that was my mega rega ship tour, jumbo ship tour, walk around, walk and talk ship tour on the Carnival Jubilee. I don't think I got into every nook and cranny. I'm going to leave you to do some exploring for yourself, but I hope you got enough of a taste to know what you're getting into when you get on the Jubilee. Hey, one more thing. I did point out some of the differences between this ship and the Carnival Celebration. If you haven't seen my Mega Rega Carnival Celebration ship tour, make sure you check that out next. Thanks for watching this one. Subscribe for more. This is Tony for La Lido Loca. Until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.